Hey everybody, it's Ron Bass with another edition of Soar High Personal Development, your source for inspiration. Well, joining me today is a special guest, Mr. Eric Stevens, martial artist extraordinaire, along with Mike Rose, also martial artist extraordinaire, David, David, Davin Hunley with an I, Brent Atterbury. So, here we are again, and uh, today we're going to be talking about how to overcome doubt, dealing with our lack of self-confidence, getting through the haze every day, trying to stay on track to reach our goals. It's very important to reach our goals. Goal setting is everything. If you don't have a goal, it's almost like a roadmap. You have to have goals, personal goals, financial goals, fitness goals, personal development goals. So gang, what do you have to say about all this? Oh, wow. That's a great question, Ron. I think, uh, I think it's always important to have a destination, you know, where you're going, you know, if you don't really know where you're going, are you ever going to get anywhere? Right. So I think you're right about the goals. A long time ago, someone told me if you, if you don't write your goals down, they're not goals. And I'm sure that could be debated, but it always worked for me when I, when I started actually writing my goals down, um, it made a difference. Like I I started to see those things uh, come into play and, and things started to seem to line up better when I wrote them down and made them real. I like it. So I think that's a, an important part of the process, but this particular subject matter today isn't about the goals, right? It's about doubting yourself along the way, overcoming the doubt and hitting the goal, despite maybe thinking it's not realistic and you're not going to hit it. Figuring a way to stay on track and not getting off the track to get to that goal. That's, that's what we're talking about today. And, and you're right, writing them down is very important. Even dating them, even signing the goal is a, becomes a legal binding document to yourself and uh, giving yourself maybe a year out to accomplish. And if you don't get there, reset the goal, reset the date. And um, that goal really becomes uh, uh, almost like a, like I say, a legal binding document to yourself. I don't know. Maybe there's, some, maybe there's actually some sort of mis- mystical power to write, putting something in writing. Like I'm thinking back to... Uh, you know, if you wanted to look at it from a religious perspective, when That's God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, He didn't whisper them in Moses's ear; He wrote them down on, on them stone down. tablets, right? That's like, I mean, this is way this goes way back in history, and there could actually be some sort of actual power to writing things down and putting it in writing. Well, and then putting it in your billfold. Like I have my goals in my billfold. Every time I touch the billfold, I recite the goals. And the law of psychology is you become what you think about. That's part of that whole gig, right there kind of like who you hang out with. Like if I hang out with you, I'm going to become a better martial artist. If I hang out with Mike, I'm going to become a better martial artist. So you have to spend time with people you most aspire to want to become like. Uh, it's, it's, it's not rocket science. It's a, it, these are laws of psychology. Right. So on the subject of doubt, um, you know, I was thinking about that for a little while today before we started the podcast. And I was thinking back to, you know, what was something I've done where I had doubt? where I was doubting my ability to actually follow through and do it. So keeping it simple, uh, I went bungee jumping for the first time in 1996, right before I got out of the army, went with a bunch of buddies and I thought, Hey, I'm going to go jump off this crane. And, uh, it was a scary idea, but I've always been kind of the adventurous type. So I'm like, you know, Hey, I'll go first, you know? And then they raised me up on this gondola, like on one of the biggest cranes I've ever seen. It was it was pretty uh, surreal. And I get up there and all of a sudden I realized I might have over spoke a little bit. Like I was terrified. I was scared. I was like, man, this is just, uh. but if I don't do it and the guy behind me is whispering in my ear, Hey, just say the word and I'll lower the gondola back to the ground and you can have half of your money back. But I was thinking, man, I'm going to get laughed at bad if I don't. And so what ended up being the, the thing that helped me overcome my doubt in that situation was I thought thousands upon thousands of other people have done this. They've done it and I, I can't justify not doing it on that premise alone. Just seeing other people do things and follow through. And you're already up there too. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, you, know, you took steps. I, yeah. I, I signed up. I signed the yeah. waiver. I wrote, took the ride up. I mean, but so along the way, Wherever that doubt came in, I overcame the doubt, though, with the realization that other, this isn't something that not other people haven't done. They've done it, so yeah. why can't I do it? By the way, it was the waiver that suggested if you died that you couldn't sue them or your family That's what couldn't, I was couldn't sue them? Absolutely. I was, I was like, I was yeah. thinking in my head, Lord, did, did it disclose? I did it. I did it. And, and it was the most amazing 
it was better than jumping out of an airplane because the ground wasn't so far away. Like when you're up in an airplane, you jump out, it looks surreal. Like it doesn't seem real, but when you're on a, you know, bungee jump, the ground's so much closer, it just feels real, you know? And it's like, you're free falling. And then all of a sudden you realize, uh, you start to feel the cord pulling on your ankles and you realize, okay, I'm probably going to survive this, you know? And it's, along the it's waiver amazing. story, there's another uh, interesting note that we, we all do jujitsu tournaments and you have to sign a waiver. I never knew this before until I started reading the fine print. You have to sign the waiver when you go out to compete, to do jujitsu tournaments, that if you die, that you can't sue yeah. the uh, If you die, you venue. die. <laughs> yeah. And you can't sue the venue or the family can't sue the venue. That's right. It's like, wow. That was like stark reality mm -hmm. that you could get. Well, out when, when you took your very first martial arts class, Ron, I remember very clearly when you came in the gym, you, you signed a waiver then that said the same thing. My waiver wow. said, if you die, you die. Wow. <laughs> so I'm not yeah, sure I even knew that it's part of, it's part of doing what we <laughs> do, man. It's part of doing what we do. <laughs> Oh, he didn't read it. He was like, "Fuck it." You, you, you have to accept that uh, possibility, and uh, when you do certain types of things, you have to accept that that's as part crazy. of the deal, and and that's what it is. And but look at the payoff, you know, tremendous payoff. Uh, also, along the lines of budgie jumping, I uh, went. I was challenged by my friend Tony, who's uh, one of my workout partners, to jump off the uh, stratosphere, uh, the stratosphere in Las Vegas. I said, "You're out of your mind." He said, oh, man, I did it. You, you can do it, too. So anyway, we went to Vegas to, to do it. Uh, actually, at the time, I was uh, uh, going with one of my coaches. to. He was doing the tournament in, in Las Vegas. So we went, and, and, and I, I remember getting on top of the stratosphere thinking, like, Eric, like, oh, my God, this is crazy. But I thought the same way. Numbers. How many people have died that have jumped off the stratosphere with these cables holding on to you? How and, many? And none. none. So I said to myself, That's right. screw it, I'm going to jump. And yeah. I did. And he was right. It's the most amazing feeling in the world. And you feel so good about yourself for accepting the challenge, right? And uh, for being uncomfortable, going through the process of being uncomfortable and getting through it. Yeah. Facing so, that fear facing and, that and fear pulling and, the trigger. And, 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 and that, trigger. that was very commendable too. I've been there. I've done everything up at the top of the stratosphere. That thing is humongous. And jumping off of that took a tremendous amount of courage. It was interesting. Sure. 100 stories I see Davin's over here shaking his head a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think we need to hear from Davin. That's a this. big old f no. I'm good on that. I would never, I would never jump off anything that is more than a counter's height. <laughs> really so yeah. like no not no. no airplanes no bungee jumping no so I'm, so how I'm does good. that not so let's let's get the other side of the perspective on doubt then so there's all these people that have done it they all tell you wow it's amazing and it's great i don't get but <laughs> you no know, still <laughs> no. not doing it i think it's interesting what you're saying because like just it's going out and facing it you know and a lot of people don't want to face adversity even you know with, even especially with like having on top of doubts too because you're gonna even going through that adversity you're gonna have that doubt well let's break it down why are people afraid of facing that kind of challenge what 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 what, well, is, what is it in the brain I, that, I think you know like if you're talking about like jumping off something like it it it's like getting it's into like, the cage like you well, no, no, you, exactly you went exactly. Into the time cage out and, time out let me speak please it's just like when he it's just like when he like would say stimulating like a real scenario. It's almost stimulating a real scenario in your brain, and you, you know what I mean. Like say like when he like say like what Coach Eric was talking about, what people want to see in the fights. That's why people love like the knockouts or like what blood and, like, and guts. They want to see it, but it's like stimulating that like you know life or death thing. Some people live for that thrill, and some people don't want to go through that. I see. So I, you know, I, I agree with that a little bit, but it just, it's to me, it's like, you got to face that, like, that may, you know, not being hard or soft, but it's just like going through that, you know, and that, that adrenaline, that anticipation, like it's going to make you stronger at the end. But if you don't too, there's art, you could argue the flip side too, though, that, you know, Hey, being conservative, being safe, yeah. playing, playing Which it Which is safe, good. That's what I was saying. I, mean, I wasn't saying, he, I wasn't saying soft. Could, I was saying, you know, right. you just come out, you just come out, you just come out differently. And so maybe maybe just we're all cut that. from a different cloth, and maybe some people are more willing and more prone to accept adversity, risk, and then others aren't so much. But people who aren't willing to do that still need tools to overcome their own doubt. So you know, if, if you don't ever jump out of an airplane, it's not going to kill you for sure. That's it's probably a good thing. But what about things that? uh, you know, business goals and life goals and things like that, that your fear holds you back 
from is it is it the same well that's you know i I would say i would say i didn't mean to cut you off ronnie earlier i just want to lose my train of thought my bad and but i would say like what you're saying it's not really life and death though like you're not stimulating anything but if you're talking about like the same doubts and like ambitions or like going through like the loops i can see what you're saying like davin does davin do you think that having that your perspective towards doing say you know extreme sports or jumping out of planes or whatever do you think that that translates to holding you back in other areas of your life or just doesn't matter or what do you think no way because the the thing with jumping out of a plane or scott or um bungee jumping is my fear of heights i don't like heights in general um but say like when i was scared to come here and talk to mike and ron about an album about making their album i was just like i've got to do it because i have the con- i know that i can make this album for them and I know I can do well. So there's that. There was also like a fear of failing this past semester of college, but I mean, I, I passed. So you face fears in other ways. Yeah, but so, I will not. I'm, I'm but good the on fear the of heights, yeah. Yeah, I'm good on the heights different. thing. Okay. I'm good let, on that. Let me address a couple of these comments. Uh, the, the idea of being scared of heights, I can recall a period in my life where I was uh, afraid of uh, flying plane rides Mm -hmm. and i used to have to take medication to fly and i remember feeling um really unworthy what they give you xanax yeah xanax (laughs) ativan actually was the drug but it's same 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 thing and i'd get i'd get so out of it you're medicated they'd have have to literally you know carry me out of the airplane sir and i i was (laughs) determined to figure it out how i could still fly without the medication so i went to a psychologist and he taught me a lot about why am I like that and how to overcome it? And the best way to overcome any fear is to face the fear head on, literally, and just deal with deal with the yourself. struggle because it's uncomfortable. That's not to say with Eric. But you will get through it if you face it head on. When you when you do right. when you do it more, what he just said was desensitizing yourself. You desensitize <laughs> exposure yourself. Therapy. Exposure yeah, therapy. Yeah, you right. need to go through it. And finally I was able to get to where I could fly without it, even though still today there's still remnants of of fear when I fly, but I've learned to manage it. Like maybe that's the best way to put it. You never right. really, you never really solve it completely, but you learn to manage the fear. But you yeah, have to hit things head absolutely. on. Absolutely. And and so I just wanted to bring that up. I've um, learned that I've learned that especially you know through the the fighting experiences and you know competitive fighting is there's there's some guys out there that aren't afraid to fight and there's some fighters who are afraid every time they do it and you just learn to manage it but what i have learned is typically the ones who don't have any fear it's not that they're brave or fearless they're just kind of dumb to be honest it's it, it's like a lack of thinking skills and intelligence that makes them uh it's not bravery that that gets them in the cage without fear it's just you know they stupidity for crazy for, by and large yeah yeah they're just crazy and don't think things through you know facing the fear courage is acting in spite of fear and yep. uh I doing agree. something when you have no fear isn't you know that's not a big deal but acting in spite of your fear that's courage and courage is something that comes like you said exposure and uh Honor. building up tolerance Honor. yeah in time and i remember the first uh jiu-jitsu tournament i did eric said you're, you're going to find out it's a whole different kind of world man they're out there to kill you and i thought well whatever but he was right but he said if you don't do it you're always going to be in your own prison you have to face the uncomfortableness of the process and then the more you do something the less the more desensitized like you said yeah. you become to the struggle it's still challenging and it's still you know uh it's not always comfortable but you you, you learn to manage it to where you 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 want to do it, you don't want to like shy away from yeah. it. You you lo- you learn to engage the process. Does that make That's, sense? It, it makes absolute sense, and I think so. You know, just to kind of bring that back around, like if you're if you have doubt and that doubt is uh, based on fear, face it. Face it and face it. Do it. Try it and push through it. And and if someone else ever did it. You know, if you're doing something no one's ever done, like, I don't know, maybe, you know, taking a trip to Mars, maybe that justifies a little more uh, thought process. But if it's something that, you know, thousands this of other people have done, do it. Who's the guy that wants to go to Mars and colonize it? Uh, uh, the guy that owns Tesla? Elon Musk. Musk. Yeah. Yeah. He's, reminds, on, he's on a trip all by himself. This reminds me. So I had a dream. Okay. I had a dream last night about, like, going in space. And really? Like, I was all about it. <laughs> I was really all about it. And then next thing you know, it was like, it felt so real. I was like, bro, I think I'm going to pull out. Cause like you don't know, you, you ain't going back. 
Like, yeah, so I was like, probably not coming back. Yeah, that's. I had a dream about that. La- literally last night. That's crazy. And like that tripped me out. Like woke up and I was like, bro, I was trippy. I wonder what that means. <laughs> like, yeah, what, you, what is the meaning? I think. Of that? I think. I think. I for me, I don't know, but I would think like going off to a different realm. Like, are you sure you want to go off to that? You know, if if that would have meant to me, it's like that's like you not knowing where you're gonna go. You just like fuck it, I'm gonna go. And then, and then you're like, oh hell no, I'm turning back. But I'm on a, on the doubts though. I could I could relate to a lot of things, even to like relationships or jujitsu or you know physical fitness or whatever. But the, what what comes along with doubts is just how you feel about yourself again. Because some sometimes you you're gonna feel like you're not enough, even though when you do it all and you're like you're still like even to like say like say like a good like a good maybe a good example right like say like the Rock right he probably has doubts all the time. And you wouldn't think that because you're like, in your mind, you're like, he's a leader. He's so fit. He's this type of guy, da, 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 da. But those people are going to have doubts too. Or, and even to me, like, sometimes I feel like, man, I don't feel like I'm good enough sometimes. And that's just, that just keeps me going. Okay. So let's talk about where does that come from? What, what happens to a person that causes I, them to feel that I way? I think maybe, maybe your significant other or, you know, people around you just like not negative or they're nor neutral. And, you know, for me, I like to be told that I, like, I'm doing a great job and, you know, whether, whether it's from the significant other, whether it's from other people, whether it's from my coaches, whether it's, you know, from uh, teachers, mentors, you know, or say like, hey, when well, I'm not doing a good job, you know what I mean? Or I'm not doing this thing right, you know, not from you, because I don't really look at you like that to Davin, sorry. Musically, yes, but I'm saying like as in life, you know what I mean? And like to what I need, how I need to fight, how I need to train, how I need to eat, how I need to sleep, you know what I mean? It's something like that. So it sounds like uh, to be successful, it's uh, quite a challenge generally. From what you're telling me, I'm saying, well, for me, from if you're talking about my life, yeah, well, oh, I mean, absolutely. no, I mean, I'm just sort of like analyzing. The, yes, it, it sounds but, like so the people that are listening out there that are like wanting to become more successful, wanting to accomplish their goals, uh, I'm just trying to make the point that it's never going to be easy, it's not supposed to be easy. You have to work hard at it every single day, and and really, the whole idea of this podcast or, or per, Soar High Personal Development is to give people some tools, some hope, some inspiration to be able to move forward in their lives. If we just say one thing along this journey that might allow you to stay in the game, then to me, this whole process was worth it. I agree. I agree. You know, if, if it's, um, if it was easy, everyone would do it, you know, and everybody's not doing it. That's, that's just the case. Most people going through, even going through it, you know, making the effort, you know, knowing what your goals are, pursuing your goals, being relentless, regardless of, you know, regardless. negativity or, you know, any, any type of, or even, uh, self, even the self doubt. Yeah. Your self doubt, you know, the, the things that other people, which, uh, which, you throw know, at you, which is like technically insecurities that could be like another podcast, but yeah, a whole nother you podcast, know, but self doubt could be very equivalent. All to these that. roads kind of run into each other when we, we talk about all the things. time. Like I, I every there's week, just so many things real. we could talk about every week that have to do with, the idea just of moving map. forward in your life and not allowing external things to cause you to stop feeling like you can accomplish. I mean, accomplishment's the drug. I don't care if it's something as simple as, hey, I learned how to uh, uh, sew. I never, I never knew how to sew. My mother was good at it. I mean, it's not my goal, but if that's your goal and you learn how to do it, that's great. That, remind, that reminds me of a student. I have almost any names, but he, you know, he everybody wants everybody wants the the money shot everybody wants the 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 real deal but don't have any fundamentals you know what i mean you don't have any foundation if you as long as you have foundation within yourself you'll be solid because you're gonna go you're gonna go through you're gonna go through the cracks you know the cracks may be deep the cracks may be shallow and you know the hole might be deep the hole might be shallow but if you have a good strong foundation especially with like the aspect of like what it's taught me or jujitsu or, you know, I couldn't relate it to anything else. So along the lines of insecurity, that I, I was just thinking about this, the idea of the haze that we go through on the daily basis. What, what causes us to feel like we're in a haze and we can't get through the day? We, we, we get off our track. We don't keep our schedule. That was a whole nother podcast one day. What, what is it that makes that happen? Are we not sleeping good? Are we not eating right? Are we not hanging around with the right people? Are we not putting the right things in our brain? Are we reading and listening to things that, that are negative? What causes us to not stay focused? 
I would I would say you know this could this this could be um um this could be crazy thought to be put in up it could be like atmosphere like the setting the you know you know what I mean like some people would say even to like where the moon's lined up or like oh now you're getting into the horoscope trip huh? yeah well not horoscope trip but some people would say like they would say like how where the earth is at where the sun's at where the other planets are some people that's will, interesting and that's what you call like a retrograde some people do talk about that where you feel more t- fatigue you know fatigue or more naturally just down you know you know what i mean but you've always taught me into a sense try to keep it in the middle yeah, but but it, but in ge- but in general, like some people will base it off, like say like a rainy day, like we're having today. You know, what I mean, some people they put some in a bad. Just put some in a bluesy. You know, and it does for me. It, it, inspi- it inspires me. I I I learn to love it. I really I enjoy this type of weather. I love this kind of weather. You know what I mean, even when it's sunny, I don't mind. It just depends on the time of the day. But I would say psycho. I would be more psychological to it. Go ahead. You know, Ron, I think I think two things that I see happen all the time with a lot of people is uh, your energy. I mean, if you're if you're tired, uh, it's hard to be focused. It's hard to be motivated. It's hard to go on all cylinders all day long. So you got to have energy, and that that goes it ties right into health and fitness, uh, keeping your body body right. Uh, the second thing is a negative. Uh, uh, negative can can ruin your day uh, for some people. Uh, and I, uh, somebody's wife that I know. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we um, no, um, You know, if she gets some crappy news, she says, "Why does this always happen to me? You know, I never get a break." And 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 then she's kind of that way for like hours and hours. So until she finds something that simulates her mood, um, probably. Or that person says, "What are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> don't yeah. let this ruin your whole yeah. day, man. Go take a breath, get back on track." So I think energy, and I think negative. You can't have you can't have low energy. Can't have negative, uh, and get where you're going. Good point. Well, well I, I always say I always say this, and somebody's told me this a long time ago, and it, it it takes a positive and negative to start the car. You can't run with two positives. You can't run with two negatives. You're gonna have a little bit of it, and you're gonna even both. And how I view life, how I view life is like either a person in, out, or neutral. They are they're gonna stay there. They're gonna back up. They're gonna go forward. So sounds you know, like jujitsu, and it does. But even to the car aspect, you have to have the positive and negative to even get it started. To even go through it so there's always going to be a little negative within the positive too and then within the positive you have to have a little negative and but i'm saying i but i do agree with you energy with people like if it's too negative you gotta see your way out because you can't because if you're already having doubt if we're speaking about doubts you're already having doubts hang on negative person good luck if you focus on your goals so i do agree with this you this is why i like doing these podcasts because it's it's all from the heart everybody here in this room has had ups and downs in their lives and you can speak truth every day <laughs> whereas whereas unfortunately from my experience a lot of motivationalists tend to be way too over the top too idealistic um I, I think it's cool to be idealistic in some ways but not to preach it to the point where you think hey if you just do this and do that everything's gonna be wonderful no it doesn't work like that well every day is going to be challenging yes. we have to have the skills to overcome and yes. deal with challenges. Yes. That's the secret in my my mind to success. Everybody has their own, you know, you've got Tony Robbins and a million other, you know, uh, motivational speakers and they all have their own method, their own approach. But at the end of the day, um, if anyone really truly had all the answers or the secret sauce, they would have shared it with everyone and everyone would be successful. Yes. No one has all the answers. Nobody knows everything. And if someone's listening to this, uh, the best thing that can come from it is the idea that you, if you get, if you have doubt, face it, move through it, decide what your goals are, and then ignore the doubt and just keep moving, keep well pushing said. forward. Keep, well keep, said. Even if it's an inch at a time. Well said. What, 365 days in a year, an inch a day, 365 inches, that's a lot of movement. And hang out with people that are maybe even stronger than you that's what i, was I about mean to say. you need mentorship i was just about to say that hang to out you. with good people you like we say like there's you're, you're gonna have like positive people but some of those positive people have some negatives yes where you're just like okay now i know not what to do but those positives like say i want to be more like 
like it say like if I was speaking about you, like the the qual like the best qualities you have, you're very conservative and you're very inspiration Thank inspirational. You. But like say like if I was talking to somebody else and they had like there's some positive qualities I like, and then they have a little bit of negative. I, on the way, I just learned like to pick up some of those positive things that I like and use not use them like as to my advantage, but use them as a tool. And, ig had, and ignore had, the bad. Yes, <clears throat> I've yes, had exactly. mentors my my whole life, and you know that's something that I've I've tried to impart that wisdom on um, some other people. I won't mention by name, but you know it's like um, you know the 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 sooner you learn that you can draw from other people's experience um, with the positives, and then also having a sounding board. You know, people that you trust that you can bounce things off of that that are going to uh, give you truth and f good feedback and and really actually care about what you accomplish or don't accomplish uh i think other people are really instrumental in being successful I, I would on say all I, levels mentors and and sounding boards and people to talk to you like if you're just going to try to be a solo one-man show and it's gonna be hard uh, it's gonna yeah it's gonna be a lot harder than you know the sooner you realize other people's experiences can be drawn on and learned from you know that can be helpful yeah and some people and some people like you tell them the truth or you're too real, they just get closed up, boxed up. You know what I mean? Like I'm, you know, that's why I always say to like myself, like I've had plenty of friends that I was, didn't think they'd be act like this. And it's like, bro, you, you know, you're turning your back on a, you know, person that is going to have your back. I'm a loyal, I'm a loyal type of person. And I could see, I could see through a lot of stuff and, you know, I have my doubts with that those type of people too. I'm have my doubts within them. Like I'm just like, man, they're not gonna make because they need somebody to tell them the truth. Need somebody to like to inspire them. Like, hey, look, it's life's not like this. I, I think doubts come a lot from disappointments. So you're disappointed. Which maybe childhood trauma. It could be a lot of things. A lot of things. You know but, what I mean? But childhood is a big part of the process. And it is. I would say any anybody that's the way they act or they what they do and how they move, it's a lot from the Some childhood. Some people are dealt a bad hand yes, from the beginning. Absolutely. And, and, and it takes a lot longer for whoever's listening out there that's gone through that uh, to get to par. I mean, it it, it <laughs> just to get to par is not easy, let alone to get above par. And, and you and, you know you have to try new things. Try new things as like you got to be open minded to even to, to, to know. You have to you know somebody's asking me how to be good at this thing. You can watch all the videos you want. You could do it all you want. You'll you'll learn something. But practice makes perfect. Practice you got to get in there. So that brings me to, new. to a joke. When I was a little boy growing up, my one of my mentors, Nathan Karchmer, who was the mayor of Springfield, by the way, back in the day, uh, and we're broadcasting this from Springfield, Missouri, by the way, for those of you that don't know or don't. Maybe you don't care, but that's 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 where we are. He was the mayor of Springfield, like 1950, and he's he was he's Jewish, so he's the only Jewish mayor in Springfield. But here I was, a little bitty Jewish kid, and this guy taught me so much as a kid. And he says, so "Here was the joke: This kid was walking down the street in New York City, in Manhattan, and he said he stopped this old man. He says, "How do I get to Carnegie Hall?" And the old man looked at him and said, "Practice, practice, practice." Carnegie Hall back in the day was like the, um, uh, what's the big uh, center there in in, uh, in New York City? Oh, on Wall Street? No, where everybody about? goes for concerts. Um, oh. Um, yeah, Madison Square yeah, Gardens. Madison. So back How'd in the day, Car Car huh? How'd you forget that? Yeah, this happens when you get old, you forget everything. <laughs> so. Uh, it's dog ears. The, the, yeah, dog ears. So the idea is that uh, you you can't get to the top without, like you said, you got to work hard. You got to practice, practice, practice. People want, everybody wants a secret sauce. I swear to God. Yeah, everybody wants a secret sauce. But then sauce. no one wants to work hard. Remember, no I said this sauce. I said this yeah. last podcast. Everybody wants a million, a million dollars, but yeah. no one want to work for it. It's crazy to me. Like, it, no matter, like, you got to put in, you got to put in that time, that blood, sweat, and tears. You got to put in that blood, And it's hard. Like, a lot of people don't have that and mentality. And there was a group called Blood, Sweat, and Tears. There's a lot of people don't have that mentality. The secret, the secret sauce is always within you, in yeah. my opinion. The secret sauce just kind of like, I, I don't know. It just kind of like you got to do it your own way. Yeah, exactly. Mike's got the knack, and you, there was a group called the, the Knack. knack back in the my Sharona. Oh my God. Awesome. With a famous 19, song 19, called what? My Sharona. My Sharona. Nineteen eighty what? Eighty seven. Nineteen eighty something. Nineteen eighty something. When were you born? It was back in the day. Ninety three. Oh my God. <laughs> it's my grandfather's favorite song ever. My Sharona. Wow. My Sharona. Ever. He's calling you old, basically. Damn. All right, guys. I'm calling time on this. We're getting okay. 
We're getting, Whoa, we're getting way I didn't out know there. Eric, our special guest, was the moderator. Yeah, I am now. He is now. Well, I just stepped up because I can beat everyone in this room up. Oh, Damn. Not me. Oh, like well, Mike, maybe not. I don't know. Oh, my God. All I have to do is say that your shoes are dad's shoes. <laughs> Damn it, I okay. can get you in one foot. <laughs> I guess hey, the one, time hey, one pinky toe. We've already gone uh, far enough. We bored everybody enough today. So just to recap a little bit. Uh, when it comes to goal setting, when it comes to self-confidence, when it comes to doubting, when it comes to trying to get through the day to reach your goals, hopefully we've given you some tools today, at least maybe one good thing. We always say in jiu-jitsu, if you can go to a, an event and learn just one thing, it was worth the time. So hopefully yes. somebody gets something out of this today. We appreciate everybody listening. And until next time, have a great day. <laughs>